Right, grade tens. I'm back again. This time, the second part of your pack revision for your finals, um, and this is looking at Excel. Okay, so here is a blank Excel worksheet. Please remember when we talk about the spreadsheet, we're talking about the file as a whole. Um, when we are talking about worksheets, we are talking about the individual sheets at the bottom here. Okay, so just some quick revision. If I right click on this sheet, you can see I can delete a sheet. I can rename a sheet. All right, I can go click on another one. I can rename that. I can move or copy a sheet. And I can even change the tab color of the sheet simply by right clicking on it um, and selecting the color. Please also remember A through all of these things, all the letters here represent the columns. Okay, some of you are not quite familiar with columns. Mm. Okay, so these are the columns and the numbers indicate our rows. And then obviously wherever I click here, it will give me a cell reference. Um, that will be a combination of the column and the row. Okay, so um, from your prac last time, you guys did the renaming of worksheets. You did uh, changing the tab color. Please, let, let me actually, uh, we're going to go through inserting columns and uh, rows. And also, I'm just going to type this out, test, test, and test. So you'll see when I right click on this column and you'll see I have to do it on the actual uh, letter and I say insert, look what happens. It inserts another column and it moves everything over to the right. So let's say I wanted to insert a column in between E and F. Um, I'd actually have to go to F and say insert, right? Because it will insert uh, to the left and move everything over to the right. Okay, if I want to put another one in there, okay, and you can see what it does. All right, so when it comes to rows, let me do one here. You see, if I right click on row number two and I say insert, look what happens, it inserts above. Okay, so this is, this is important to remember. Um, because they will tell you insert a column to the left or insert a row above You know, so just know how to do that if you need to delete it if you haven't done it correctly You can just right click and you can delete that particular row or column um, No stress All right, so now they tell you that they want you to merge and center certain columns They want you to put in a big heading so they tell you merge the range, let's take B1 to J2. Now how do I know that? Because it starts with B1 and it's ending with J2. We're going to go up to the alignment section. Please remember the font section is the same as we had in Word. Um, now the alignment section, most of it is the same with indents, alignment, left, right and center. Um, we also have vertical and horizontal alignment. But for now, we're just going to look at merge and center. And you'll see when I click on that, it turns this into one cell. Now, you can see with my alignment, I have center alignment, but it's not aligned um, vertically as well. So here, by using these two, I've now aligned my text both horizontally and vertically. Remember, horizontal is from left to right, vertically is from top to bottom. Um, if my text in a particular cell is too big, Please remember, you can do one of two things. Either you're going to enlarge it by dragging it, or you're going to enlarge it by double clicking on it. Or we can use the wrap text feature, which then makes the um, particular cell bigger uh, in terms of height or, your, or vertically, if I can put it that way. It does not widen the column. So wrap text, it simply means it goes down to the next line. Okay, uh, you were asked, I know the last time to insert a heading, okay, all those things, right. The next one we're looking at is now, I'm just going to use this row, uh, we want to insert borders. So on your font section over here, you're going to go to borders and you can see you have a number of borders. We're just going to use all borders. I've got my borders in there, um, you can see I can change my text, I can shade those cells as well. Um, if you want to do a little bit of... 
uh, formatting on your borders just go down to all borders and then go down to more borders and then you can sit and you can play around with the different styles again um, this is only if they ask you to but you can go and change all of this there and it will then reflect here so just remember you've got your borders and then you've got more borders where you can go and do more to your borders all right now they tell you to change the the height of a particular row please remember all you will do is right click on that particular row and go to row height and type in what they are saying. if they want you to change it to 75 that's where you do it um, if they want you to change the column width to a particular number um, you will type that in there and click OK all right so that's just the basic formatting um, when it comes to just popping in information or data into Word ah, sorry Excel right now the next one um, and this is why I'm using this uh, let me type out here name and we're gonna go surname and we're gonna go address um, and let's put cell number so one of the things you usually get asked remember to align this vertically and horizontally then I want you to click on right click format cells on those cells uh, because we want to go to the alignment tab so this one is important because they will usually ask you to rotate the text so remember now I highlighted what I wanted to rotate right click format cells and then I can actually go and rotate that whichever way sometimes they'll give you the degrees sometimes they'll just give you a picture um, of how they want it rotated and just click OK and there it is done All right so that's that then we move on to the formulas so most of the formulas I'm just gonna go through a few uh, you're looking at min max sum average so we're gonna go let me actually just zoom in here we're gonna go with min max sum average remember average must be written out completely um, yeah I think that's that's about it okay we're gonna go count we're gonna go count a we're gonna go count blank right so with min I'm just gonna type out a few numbers here And you'll see when I put in a formula to say equals min remember your formulas always begin with the equals and I highlight that whole section and hit enter it will give me the minimum or the smallest number in that range max will give me the largest number in that range sum what sum gonna do sum is gonna add up all of those numbers in that range average is going to give me the average number within that range okay um, up here on the number section under your home tab I can decrease the decimals if I want to to say well average is 107 or 106.9 if I use my count formula what is that going to do let's have a look that is going to count the number of cells. Let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nope. What it's doing is it's counting the cells, but only those that actually have a number in them. If I go equals count A and I do exactly the same thing again, I get the same number. Okay, so it's counting cells that have something in them. Uh, if I go count blank, this should only come up with a number one because there's only one blank cell so count and count a will not count the blank cells it will only count if there's um, numbers text in them now bear in mind count if I use this blank and I say text or sorry test here you'll see count blank changes to zero because now in this range there are no blanks however count a has changed to 13 because count a counts um, the cells that have numbers and letters count a doesn't change because it only counts the number of cells that actually have numbers in them right then um, another one that's important is the date 
right? So we have two. We have today, so equals today, and we have equals now. And you can see the difference between the two. Um, this one shows today's date. This one shows today's date and the time. So please just uh, see what they are actually asking you to do in terms of date, time, anything like that. Um, and then you can work it out from there. Okay, so let's say this we want displayed in currency. Okay, please remember just home tab. We're going to stick to number and uh, we've got an option here that gives us currency. We can also go to the top and say currency over here and you'll see it will change all that to currency. Okay, you can also see that we can drop the decimals if we need to, um, but that will obviously depend on what they are asking you to do in the question. The thing we have is our autofill feature. So if I go number one and I want it to drag down and go well, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can see it doesn't do that. But if I go one, two, and I highlight both of them, look what happens, three, four, five, six, seven. So it does the autofill. So you need more than one. Um, if I go Monday and I say Tuesday, and I highlight both of them and I begin to move down. Look there, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, blah, blah, blah. And there it will do that for me. The last formula we're going to look at is count if. Okay. Now with count if, we are basically saying, look, check it. Uh, we want Excel to check into the range and count if it matches a criteria. So the first thing to do is just to put in the formula. We're then going to open our bracket and you can see immediately it says there the range and the criteria so we're going to use this range all right we then put in a comma or you can put in a semicolon um, to separate the, the the range from the criteria so what is our criteria going to be all right our criteria could be uh, we want it to match or to count only the cells that have the number five so we put it in inverted commas because it's text. We hit enter. And there you can see it counts three. There's one, two, three. Now we can change this formula. We can say it must count those that are less than five. And there's two, one, two. We can also say it must count more than six. In other words, the cells that have numbers higher than six. And there's two of them. Okay, so that is what count if does. With count if, you will get a mark usually for the formula. Uh, you'll get a mark for the range that you've chosen. That is the correct range. And the criteria that you've put in is correct as well. So please remember whatever your criteria is, put it in inverted commas um, and that should work well for you.